Let's start by taking a second to think about a question that has puzzled many scholars, skeptics, and believers alike. If there's a God, why doesn't he just simply reveal himself? It's a compelling question that challenges the core of religious faith and belief, demanding tangible proof of the divine. Pondering this question leads us to a natural human dilemma, a longing for undeniable evidence of the divine. We live in a time where seeing is believing, where proof and data are king, yet religion relies heavily on this idea of faith. The very essence of faith is believing without seeing. But here's the paradox. If God were to provide undeniable proof of his existence, wouldn't that eliminate the need of faith? What would undeniable proof of the divine even look like? Imagine your God. How would you choose to reveal yourself? A grand spectacle for all to see might seem too impersonal. While individual visits could feel intrusive, almost like a door-to-door -door salesman, you could cause a bunch of cosmic signs and wonders. This might seem convincing, but over time, people would likely dismiss it as ordinary and not divine. You could embed yourself in people's minds to make everyone inherently know that you exist, but that would remove free will for people. Wouldn't you prefer to have a relationship with someone who chooses to love you versus someone you force to love you? History shows us time and time again that humans always find a way to adapt. Miracles become mundane. Signs are interpreted in countless ways. And the divine made too visible might overwhelm or be dismissed as mere fantasy. But what if I told you there's a different approach? One that's more subtle yet profoundly impactful. Consider the power of incarnation, God becoming human. This isn't just about showcasing power or performing miracles. It's about building a relationship, seeking to understand human struggles and demonstrating a way of life revolving around unconditional love and sacrifice. But would that be enough for a random man to just show up on earth and start claiming he was God? Probably not. People would just think that he was crazy. So what if this God man influenced different writers from different places at different time periods to pre-announce his coming and then proceed to fulfill over 300 of these prophecies and perform over 35 miracles? What if I told you that there was over 2.17 billion people today who believe that a man lived over 2,000 years ago who did exactly that? And that man's name is Jesus Christ. But what is it about Jesus that has led billions of people who have never seen or met him to follow his teachings and philosophies? A man who for the first 30 years of his life, we barely know anything about. In fact, of the things that we do know, it seems that Jesus was just an ordinary man living in Nazareth, likely under his parents' roof. With a couple of siblings, he eventually got a job working as a carpenter, just like his dad. That sounds like the experience of some of our friends from youth, doesn't it? So, if the first 30 years of his life were seemingly minute, then what was it that made Jesus so special? Imagine a man born in a place so modest it barely registered on the map of the mighty Roman Empire. He walked from one place to the next, never traveling more than 200 miles from the town where he grew up. He had none of the resources people use today to amplify their message. No TikTok, no podcast, he didn't even have the platforms of influence of the first century. No political office, no army, and his family was considered insignificant for the time period. He didn't attend the prestigious schools of the time. He never married, he owned no property, and the only possessions to his name were probably the clothes he wore on his back. His adult ministry lasted a whopping three years until public opinion turned against him. He found himself abandoned and betrayed by many who once followed him. He was rejected by religious leaders, pursued by powerful men, mocked and persecuted by his enemies. His trial, unjust, and he was publicly humiliated, beaten, and ultimately executed? And yet, here we are, centuries later, still talking about him. Over two billion people revere him as the divine incarnate, the cornerstone for the largest faith on the planet. How? Did a man whose life by all accounts start out ordinary end with a legacy so profound, still influencing billions long after his death? I'd be hesitant to take that at face value though. I mean, 
looking at it from a Christian perspective feels a little biased, doesn't it? I mean, is the Bible even a reliable historic document? Sure, the New Testament has over 5,000 manuscripts or portions of manuscripts, which in comparison to writings about people like Julius Caesar, Homer, and Plato, it's not even close. I think it might be valuable to also take a look at what sources outside of the Bible would say about the person of Jesus throughout history. Here, in the writings of historians, governors, and scholars who never followed Christ, we find whispers of a man whose story transcends the boundaries of faith. First, a Roman historian, Tacitus, who thoroughly documented the empire's history. He was not a fan of Christians, finding them very troublesome. Yet, in his writings, he mentioned Christ executed under Pontius Pilate under Tiberius' reign. Tacitus, without realizing becomes an unlikely witness to the crucifixion, offering us a glimpse from the eyes of Rome itself. Then there's Josephus, a Jewish historian who navigates the complex identity of being a Jew under Roman rule. In his writings, he sketched a portrait of Jesus as a wise man, a miracle worker, someone who drew crowds of both Jews and Gentiles. Josephus, in his attempt to write, record the times, inadvertently testifies to Jesus' life and influence seen through the lens of a contemporary Jew. Venture a little further and you stumble upon references in the Talmud, where rabbis debate and discuss throughout the centuries. Here, Jesus is mentioned with a mixture of respect and contention, a testament to the fact that he wasn't a myth, but a figure of significant discourse. Also, there was a letter from Pliny the Younger to Emperor Trajan, where he puzzled over how to deal with Christians who worshiped Jesus as God. It's a Roman governor seeking advice on a matter that to him is both political and perplexing. Through his words, we see the early Christian steadfast devotion, a reflection of the impact Jesus had on those who believed in him. These voices from the past offer us snapshots of Jesus from outside the Christian tradition. It's like putting together a puzzle where each piece shows a different side of Jesus, helping us to see a complete image of who he was over 2,000 years ago. Through these unexpected sources, we learn that Jesus' influence stretched well beyond his close circle, touching people from all walks of life and different beliefs. As we conclude this journey, I wanna clarify that the purpose of this video is not to persuade you into becoming Christian. Instead, what has fascinated me, and hopefully you as well, is this universal appeal of Jesus' character Jesus is a figure who transcends the boundaries of Christianity, finding a place merged into the teachings and traditions of at least six religions that predate his birth, including Buddhism and Hinduism. These religions have either incorporated Jesus into their worldview, adapted their teachings to include him, or acknowledged his existence in some form or another. Also, two of the world's major religions, Islam and Judaism, recognize Jesus in roles of reverence, viewing him as either a wise rabbi or even a prophet. This widespread acknowledgement across diverse faith brings us to an intriguing point of contemplation. Here's a thought to consider. Given the diverse perspectives on Jesus and the variety of ways in which his essence has been explored, reflecting on the scope of his impact is worthwhile. If countless individuals across various backgrounds have found reasons to acknowledge, worship, or follow Jesus, Shouldn't we be curious about who Jesus claimed to be through his own words and actions? This isn't just about adopting a new religion or disregarding your current beliefs. It's an invitation to explore, to dive into the historical, spiritual, and cultural layers surrounding a man who helped shape the course of human history. It's about considering the possibility that in the vast world of philosophical thought, there might be something uniquely compelling about Jesus and his teachings. So I challenge you, take a moment, look beyond the boundaries of what you already know or believe. Consider exploring the accounts of Jesus' life, his teachings, and his legacy. Not just as religious scripture, but as a narrative that has captivated human imagination for thousands of years. Who knows? You might discover perspectives you never considered, insights that resonate with you, or even answers to questions you've long pondered. Thank you for your open-mindedness and joining me on this journey beyond sight. Let's dare to not just see with our eyes, but with our hearts and minds. 
May the legacy of Jesus inspire us to look deeper into the mysteries of faith, history, and humanity. Jesus was more than just a man. He was a light in the dark. This is only the beginning of this journey. Stay tuned as we explore Jesus through the personal testimonies of those around us. Welcome to A Light in the Dark.